Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I am reviewing a brand new and very affordable alcohol marker. The company that makes these markers is called Artix. They reached out to me and asked if I'd like to try out their new Oros markers. And of course I said yes. So they sent me the 80 set of Oros markers. These markers have a brush tip on one end and a chisel tip on the other end. They have tons of color inside their barrels, making them juicy markers. The brush tip is very easy to use. They blend beautifully and the lines are very smooth. In fact, somebody actually commented on one of my recent videos where I was using them and not telling you that I was so I could try them out. The comment was that they seemed super smooth and that is the best part about these Oros markers. So let's take a look at the supplies that Arctic sent me to try out. So the 80 marker Oros set comes in this big box. The 80 marker set right now is $75.99 on Amazon, so it's less than a dollar a marker. You get everything in this box, including there's kind of a little instruction sheet indicating that there may be some scent from the markers. I didn't notice a strong scent at all, although sometimes with alcohol markers, if you use them a lot, they can have that slight scent. There's some stickers and a carrying case. There's a little postcard and the strap for the carrying case as well. And then there's a swatch chart that you can use to swatch out all the colors in your set. There's also these two little desk cases that you can put all the markers in and then these two little feet that allow you to have them at an angle so that they are kind of angled up towards you. As I mentioned, there's a chisel tip on one end and a brush tip on the other end. I really like this brush tip a lot. Feels a little more sturdy than my Copic markers and it's able to use just the point of the tip. So I did place them in order of the swatch chart so that I could look at the swatch chart and then find the marker pretty easily. So I'm just gonna go through and show you all the colors that come in the 80 marker set. And I did notice that when I was coloring on the swatch chart versus on white paper, sometimes the color looked darker on the white paper that I was using. So just be aware you may wanna create your own swatch chart on the paper that you are going to end up using when you're coloring. Artix also sent me their washi tape, which you can use to mask off areas. And I will do a little bit of that when we're creating a background later in this video. So you could also use this to hold your dies in place if you're doing die cutting as well. They also sent me 30 sheets of a sketch marker pad that I am going to try out. It does feel super smooth. Now that you've seen the supplies that I'm working with, let's take a look at these markers in action so you can see if they would work for you. I'm going to create a couple of different backgrounds. I'm gonna do some no line coloring and I'm going to color in small images like critters. That should give you a pretty good overview of how these markers work. So first up, I am going to cut a piece of the marker pad down to about an A2 size and I am going to use the washi tape and I'm just gonna use it all around the margin to create a white margin around the coloring that I'm going to do. So first up, I'm going to try using the chisel tips to create a rainbow of colors and I've masked off that edge on the background so that we'll have a nice white edge around this rainbow that we're creating. I love, again, how juicy these markers are. It is very easy to get a smooth look just by going over them a couple of times. And you can see that where I cross over, you are creating kind of a new color there, which means that they are blending together, even though I'm not really looking at, you know, uh, with Copics, there's like maybe three colors, a light, a medium, a dark that I would use. I'm not really looking at that. I'm just kind of looking to see which colors I like like in a rainbow and then just allowing them to blend in the places where the two colors cross over. So you can see that I'm not trying to be perfectly straight here. I'm not using a ruler. This 
between that blue and that green is probably the best example of creating a new color on the overlap there. And then last but not least, a little bit of a purplish pink at the bottom as well. And the next thing is to just peel off that washi tape. Now, this is a nice thin washi tape. You can see that it really kept the marker in that line. Just be careful when you're peeling it off that you don't rip the paper. Just be gentle when you're peeling. Now I'm going to use the brush tip to create a sky and some grass. So I've drawn little clouds in and I'm going to avoid those and then I'm going to use the brush tip brushing from the sides into the center. So I'm kind of placing the tip at a harsh angle so that I'm not using the top of the brush there, I'm using the side of the brush. And now I'm using another kind of turquoise color to go in and blend together. And you really want, I like to avoid those clouds at first because I want them to stand out and be white. So now I'm going to pull off that washi. Again, I'm gonna be careful. It is sticky. It doesn't tear as long as you're careful. So that's just what I would say this washi actually does stay in place. It's really nice. And I'm using my glass mat, so I'm just placing the ends of the washi on the glass mat. For the grass, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm obviously not gonna leave open white spaces for clouds since there are no clouds in the grass. So I'm gonna go over with one color, and then I'm gonna come in with a darker color, and then I'm gonna go back over it with that lighter color. And it is blending those spots out really, really nicely to create some of that grassy hill looking area there. And again, I'm gonna carefully peel off the washi and then I have my sky and my grass. So now I'm gonna use the top of the brush tip and I'm just gonna put in some blades of grass. Sorry, my head gets in the way a little bit there, but I'm trying to see over the top. So I'm gonna do really fine flicks with the tip of the brush and this is very easy to do. I feel like these brush tips are a little bit more stable than the Copic ones. Maybe that's because most of mine are really, really old, but I do have some newer ones and I feel like these are just really easy to use the very tip of the brush. Now that we've created a couple of backgrounds with the markers, I wanna share how I color critters with these markers as well. So I am going to use some Gina K Amalgam Ink in Obsidian and stamp it on that marker paper. I am going to heat set this. Anytime you're stamping and then coloring with alcohol markers, I do recommend heat setting it if you can't let it dry overnight. So I am just doing some very basic coloring. I find that with tiny little images like this, these markers, make a nice smooth effect to them even if you're not doing a ton of blending and shading. So here I'm using like a warm gray to color in the white picket fence and once I get the basic color down I am just adding a slight extra bit to the bottom and that's kind of all you need to do. The markers are so juicy that it kind of blends out itself. So for this dog, for example, I am just going spot by spot so that you don't see a lot of uh, lines where I'm just adding color in here. But because again, they're so juicy, there's a lot of smoothness to it. And all I did was then add a little bit of a darker color in certain spots on the ends of the paws, around the little hind leg, and on the little fuzzy spot of the tail. And it looks like I did some blending and shading. I didn't really. <laughs> so I really like these for that. I think it makes it very simple to color them in. So now let's do some no line coloring. I am gonna use the sketch marker pad again. I'm gonna use some Gina K amalgam ink in Whisper just so that I can have a hint of the outlines there. Again, I'm using the tips of the brush to actually outline the leaves here. So I'm gonna do one leaf at a time. I definitely recommend in a large flower like that that you do want to go one at a time. You're gonna have the best ability to blend things out if you do one leaf at a time rather than all the outlining and then all the coloring in. So I did in this case kind of use three different greens. And basically what I did was I outlined with the darkest then I came in with the lightest 
and then I went with the medium color and then the lightest to blend it out. So you can see there that I am leaving, when I do the lightest color, the tip, I'm leaving white until the very, very end when I go back with that lightest color. And that's how I get like kind of a highlight on the end of the leaf, which I think would be the brightest spot because it's not tucked underneath anything. It's kind of sticking out. And so it's getting the most light. I'm gonna do the same type of thing with the flower. And this time I'm gonna draw the highlight in. So you see those bubbles that I draw on each of the petals? That's to remind myself not to color those in right away because I tend to think I'm gonna leave a large enough highlight and then as I'm coloring, I end up with this teeny tiny little highlight and it doesn't work. So I have to remind myself not to color in every little speck of the leaf and I do that by drawing those little bubbles and finished off by kind of adding some orange to the center. You can see that it looks like it bleeds through but it's not bleeding through where it's getting uh, so wet and the back that it's going through to the glass mat. I did decide to cut this flower out. This is from the stamp market, their heirloom rose. And I'm using a light gray around the outside to take away that white harsh edge so that it looks a little more shaded. Now let's turn these into cards. Okay, so to turn the no line coloring into a card, I am just going to add some white gel pen details to the flower. Since I do struggle with highlights on the leaves and the petals, sometimes it's just easier to add in a little bit of white gel pen or some white pencil if you have that instead. I'm gonna use some tape runner to mat some pink cardstock on green cardstock, and then I'm gonna use some anti-static powder on some vellum, brush away the excess, and stamp my sentiment kind of of, I'm going to create a band. So basically it's not quite in the center because I do want it a little bit off center, but at the bottom of a horizontal A2 piece of vellum. And then I'm just gonna carefully melt that embossing powder, not holding the heat gun onto the vellum for too long so as not to scorch it. And I trimmed it down to kind of, like I said, a band. I'm gonna use some tape runner to adhere that flower down onto my matted cardstock there. And then it's time to place the vellum over the bottom of the card and just fold those edges around the back so that I don't have to use a ton of adhesive on the vellum itself so that you can hide it, which is really, really nice. I did use a little bit behind the sentiment itself. And then I'm just gonna use some enamel dots from the stamp market in clear as accents for this card. To turn the rainbow background into a card, I did let it dry Fully, and I am adding anti-static powder to it because I'm going to white heat emboss on top of that rainbow. So really be sure to let that one dry because if you have it wet with ink, it's definitely gonna pick up all that embossing powder. I am using a large sentiment stamp from Concord and Ninth. It's from the Fruit for Thought stamp set. So I did use my Debbie tool to get even pressure all over. And then I did pour some white embossing powder on top all over that sentiment. And just even like that, I think it looks so cute. But then once you heat set it, that white really pops and stands out on that colored background. I absolutely love that rainbow that I was able to create with the chisel tip from the markers. And those colors are just some of my favorite bright rainbow of colors. So I did just mat it on a white piece of cardstock and called that one done. Or the little doggies that were from Heavy Doodle. This is the Who Let the Dogs Out set. I did use the dies to cut everything out and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment at the top of that sky and grass background. I thought the sky and grass was perfect for these cute little pups and I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Transparency to get my sentiment lined up in the center of that little background there and I love this sentiment. It says live life like someone left the gate open. So I have a little gate and then I have my dog house and these things I am adhering just with tape runner to cover up that horizon line between the sky and the grass and then I'm going to pop up one dog kind of in the background with one layer of foam squares from Thermoweb and he's going to go kind of on that right hand side and then this guy is going to get 
two layers of foam squares so that we have three different vantage points. We have the guy in the front, in the center, and then the house and the fence in the back. And I loved creating both the background and the colored in critters for this card. I hope you enjoy taking a look at these brand new Oros markers from Artex and that you are excited to give them a try. Artex is celebrating their anniversary this month and they have tons of giveaways on their Instagram account. So I'll be sure to link to that down in the YouTube description box below the video for you to check them out. I will definitely be using these markers more in the future and I'll let you know when I do in those videos from now on. If you have any other questions that I didn't cover in today's video, please leave them down in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as I can. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. It's re okay. <laughs> a new affordable alcohol marker. Just say it in a sentence, that'd be better.